implant implant as a family planning method today specifically we are going to look at implant as a family planning method an implant is a small flexible progesterone releasing rod that is superficially inserted under the skin of a female or a woman's upper arm and it provides protection against pregnancy for three to seven years in this very video we are going to look at the types of implants we look at the indications of who can get an implant we look at the advantages or the health benefits that come with using an implant and then the disadvantages or the common side effects that comes with using an implant stay tuned yes uh, welcome again to dr malik talk show a show where you know about your health wherever you are at zero cost looking at the types of implants what we need to first understand is that these implants regardless of the type regardless of the brands they all work in the same way they work in the same way in a sense that they work by the principle of a default or releasing a progestin progestin is a synthetic synthetic or artificially made hormone that resembles or work in the same way as a hormone progesterone would work in a female's body regardless of the type they all work in the same principle we have three types depending on the time time range that they work in or the time time extension that they work in we have one for three years we have one for four years and we have one for five years these may come in different uh, different brandings different different manufacturers however the common ones are implanon we have uh, femplant we have uh, we have jabel those are the, some of the common ones however depending on the country and the distributors and the manufacturers they are always different the choice the choice of the type used will always entirely depend on the fertility intentions of a woman or how long after does a woman want to get pregnant after some women would prefer to get pregnant after three years or after one year or after two or five some women would prefer to get pregnant after five years so the type used on you would definitely depend on the on that your fertility intentions as a woman now let us look at the indications of who are the people that would benefit more from using by using this type of family planning method who are the people that would get better who are the people that will benefit more by choosing to use this family planning method against any other methods one women who want a long-term stable and highly effective type of family planning remember this type of family planning is long term three years four years five years will be more reliable as compared to swallowing pills every day or swallowing emergency pills every day so a woman who wants to have long term stable and reliable family planning method would have to choose and go for this type of family planning method that's one then two women who smoke women who smoke should choose to use this type of family planning because it contains only one component which is a progestin or what we may call progesterone and we since we all we very well know that that smoking has a direct effect on estrogen hormone we don't want to get involved into smoking with estrogen hormone like some other types of family planning what we call combined combined contraceptives would would have so a woman who smokes would have to choose this type of family planning because it has only one hormone progestin number three women who are over 40 years old and above women who are 40 years old and above would benefit more from this type of family planning because because at that time usually a woman is looking looking towards clocking the menopause period and we all know that in menopause period one of the disturbing hormone is estrogen at this point of time you don't want to disturb or to inconvenience or to imbalance anything to do with estrogen so you have to introduce in a type of family planning that doesn't have this this other hormone estrogen number four a woman who has a pid what you call pelvic inflammatory disease pelvic inflammatory disease is a disease of the reproductive system of a woman and we all know or we know that in reproductive system of a woman if you introduce in other types of methods like intrauterine devices or iud's which are which are the alternatives to this implant 
they would aggregate more or increase or excavate the chances of this disease becoming more serious or bringing about more effects or even bringing about complications and the chances of healing are always less when you have an IUD. So a woman who has a PID which is not yet treated or which has been going through treatment failures, I would have to choose this type of method. Number five, a woman who has liver or an ongoing liver problem. If you have an ongoing liver problem, you're also not allowed to use this type of family planning. Okay, having looked at the indications or the people who may benefit more from by using this type of family planning method, let us look at the contraindications or the people who are discouraged or who would not benefit more from using or by using this type of family planning. One, women who have breast or genital malignance of any sort. If a woman has any breast lump or breast, breast swelling or breast anything suspected to be a breast cancer, shouldn't associate with themselves with using this type of family planning because it is it is hormonal and some of those diseases are aggravated by uh, by introduction of some hormones into the body so a woman who is having or who has any type of malignancy should not do that number two any woman with undiagonized vaginal bleeding if you have any vaginal bleeding that is not diagonized you're not supposed to use this type of family planning because some vaginal bleedings usually come with with cancerous diseases or with with hormonal imbalance diseases so you don't want to introduce this type of hormone hormone in your body if you're not sure enough or if it's not fully diagonized unless if diagonized and treated and it is something not to do with the hormones then you may use it otherwise you're contraindicated from using this type of method four any woman who is using some types of medicines should be cautious when using this type of family planning. Medicines like carbamazepine, medicines like fentoin, medicines like rifampicin, they should be very cautious or they should use other alternatives. Or otherwise, if using this type of method, you should also use a backup family planning method. For example, after engaging or after getting into sexual activities, on a day that you suspect to be in ovulation, better to use a backup pill on top of this this type of family planning why because it usually the medicines that you take those medicines that i've talked about usually lower the effectiveness five any woman with systemic lupus erythromatous should not consider using this type of family planning method either if it is fully diagnosed and there's a positive phospholipid uh, antibody test or not yet suspected should also not use this type of family planning method because it will aggravate the disease. So it is not good to associate with it if you have SLE as a disease. So having looked at that, at the indications and the contraindications, let us look at the disadvantages. What would be the disadvantages of using this type of family planning method? Okay, having looked at the types of this method, the indications of this method and the contraindications of this method, let us look at the disadvantages and the common side effects that you should expect or when you see that you should not get surprised of or when you see you should seek for med a medical attention of this type of family planning method the ones that we're going to talk about here know that everyone will get them however a number of people will get them someone will get maybe one side effect and the rest will not be there another person will get one two or three and another person will not get any side effect at all however the side effects and the disadvantages are here to be discussed about. One, you expect to get spotting. Spotting is uncoordinated or unexpected bleeding that is not heavy, that is not light, but comes often once in a while at a time that is not expected. So you expect to get spotting. Then two, there is what we call secondary amenorrhea. Secondary amenorrhea is loss of periods. When you don't have periods or when you're no longer seeing your blood or your me monthly menstrual bleeding as you used so to, to see them before you got this type of family planning method. So you would expect to get this type of, of, of side effect. Three, there is unpredictable or unexpected irregular bleeding. This does not happen to everyone. However, it may happen to some people and it does happen to some people. 
unexpected or what we call irregular bleeding. That means you may bleed after one week, then you bleed after another another one week, then you bleed again after three weeks or after a month, or you even skip like three months and then you bleed after two weeks. The bleeding pattern is usually not stable or not coordinated in this type of family planning as an effect. It's not to everyone, however, it happens to some people. Then five, this type of family planning is very effective, but not as effective as the family planning that contain COCs or combined oral contraceptives. So there is some slight chance of getting pregnant, especially if you're taking some medications, especially like the ones that we talked about. Six, still talking about the, the effectiveness and we would have still have to look at the medicine interruptions. If you're taking some medicines, there are chances that this type of family planning may interrupt the effectiveness of those medicines or the medicines interrupting the effectiveness of the family planning method. So still looking at the disadvantage, but um, still in a more of a side effect way, we look at dizziness. Uh, women who are using this type of family planning usually expect some dizziness, especially in the first three months of getting it. Especially the first three months of getting it, they expect to get some dizziness and some lightheadedness. It is a common side effect, but then after some time, it goes away. It resolves on its own. Unless if it has persisted, then medical attention comes in. Migraine headache. Migraine headache are also comes in to some people who use this type of family planning. However, it's not everyone, but some people do get migraine headaches. And when it comes, unless it has exceeded a certain level, it, is, it can be controlled by your doctor. Heavy bleeding. Um, heavy bleeding is also uh, another side effect that usually comes, whereby you may get twice twice as much blood that you've been getting as the, way, the one you get after getting this type of family planning. Uh, this usually happens uh, in the first three to four months of getting this type of family planning. However, it resolves, and if it comes, there is always medicine that can control this type of bleeding if it has exceeded or if it has been persistent. There is also prolonged bleeding. Prolonged bleeding, uh, which goes to twice as many days as you used to get in the past before getting this type of family planning. You find that some women, some women go in to uh, get their menses for only four days. However, after getting this type of family planning, they may get them for up to eight days. However, this does not happen to everyone. And if it has happened like that, there is always medicine that removes that side effect and you normalize back very well. There is also lowered libido or what we call lessened loss or loss of sexual drive. There is a lowering of the, the craving or the need or the drive for having sex usually in women who have this type of family planning. Yes, it is common but it does not happen to everyone. And if that happens, there is always medicine to control it. However, loss of libido is one of the side effects of using an implant. So thank you for watching this show. Like always, we are always here for you. Be ready and be free to ask anything where you have not, not understood. We shall be ready to answer you.